Hello everyone, so I was just browsing the internet as I usually do and I came across an interesting story. Now what is this story? Well this is the story of the quote unquote anti-bullying helpline crash override network. Yes, the same crash override network formed by Zoe Quinn, the Zoe, the Zoe of the Zoe post, the Zoe Quinn that basically inspired the events that led up to Gamergate. No, she did not inspire Gamergate, she inspired the events. And how, despite what it claims to be, it isn't what it really is cracked up to be. As you will see, this is a company or a helpline that does more harm to victims of bullying than it could possibly do to help them. But first, what is Crash Override? <laughs> If you were to go to their website, this is what they have to say about what Crash Override is. Crash Override is a crisis helpline, advocacy group and resource centre for people who are experiencing online abuse. We are a network of experts and survivors who work directly with victims, tech companies, lawmakers, media, security experts and law enforcement to educate and provide direct assistance working to eliminate the causes of online abuse. If you were to go to the variety of pro social justice websites such as Wired.com and the Mary Sue you would see something similar. Co-founded by Quinn and fellow game developer Alex Lifshitz, the Crash Override Network provides advice, resources and support from survivors with personal experience to those facing harassment. The network, which launched Friday several months back, if not a year, also offers access to experts in information security, white hat hacking, PR, law enforcement, legal, threat monitoring and counselling, and was created six months after Gamergate made her a target for angry video game fans opposed to the diversification of gaming culture. All that bullshit people, all the propaganda you know that is utter bullshit. And the Mary Sue says it's billed as by survivors for survivors. And they also quote uh, from Crash Override, our network works preventatively and reactively warning targets and working with them during episodes of harassment to keep them safe and provide them with the means to reduce harm and rebuild as well as disempower their harassers. We understand that every cast of online harassment is unique in terms of its targets, aggressors and circumstances and that no one plan of survival is suitable for everyone. We instead work with clients to tailor a unique plans, sick of action, informed by our own experience and prior success in the field. Now that is what these positive, social justice friendly journals have to say about Crash Override. But this is what Georgina Young, writing for Tech Raptor, who has had personal experience with Zoe Quinn and her legion of followers, has to say about this. Zoe Quinn once made me cry. She did so by writing this article about Tech Raptor, a huge portion of which was about how I am a terrible person and games journalist. She lied about things I had done and taken others completely out of context. Those who followed me knew that I had made some mistakes, apologised for them, and that I vowed to continue improving as a games writer. But she libelled me, just as I was beginning, seemingly for talking to people she didn't like on Twitter and giving her game a fair yet mediocre review. She stickied the post to the top of her Twitter for her 47,000 followers to see, and they then took it upon themselves to call me a cunt and tell me to go kill myself. I almost quit games journalism that day, convinced I was a terrible person and a burden to this very publication. I still harbour many of those feelings to this day. It's a strange feeling when a celebrity, someone you didn't even think knew you existed, spends hours writing an article about how you're a piece of dirt. I spent the day in a deep depression, wrapped in my blankets, but slowly it all faded into obscurity. Then I saw that no less than 22 separate websites had praised Quinn for her anti-harassment campaign, Crash Override Network, and the stitches were ripped open anew. The woman who had harassed and demoralised me, who had tried to chase me crying from the gaming industry, she was being praised for preventing harassment, except of course for that which she herself carries out. It's so easy to forgive harassment when the victims of your attacks have already been demonised. The mainstream media took no mind when Quinn took offence to feminist charity, the fine young capitalists, and almost destroyed a woman's chance at becoming a game developer. Quinn wrote 43 tweets about how deplorable TFYC are, later claiming it to be just four, and as a consequence of her influence, she prevented them from receiving media coverage. They were DDoSed, and Quinn's friend Maya Kramer released their personal information. Then there is the story of Jason Miller, the black indie developer behind Detroit in decline and founder of the hashtag not your shield movement a movement designed to give voice to minorities women in the gaming industry Quinn again libeled his name for creating the hashtag falsely accusing him of using artwork from award-winning PlayStation title the last of us and declaring it to be his own Miller lost his job as a result of creating the hashtag and the negative publicity it drew Quinn who you must remember is now running a campaign which supposedly supports victims of 
online attacks, recently launched a blacklisting campaign, at least at the time, against Brad Wardell, CEO of Stardock. Quinn brought up previous false allegations filed against Wardell, claiming them to be legitimate and falsely stating that Wardell had hired an artist who had once drawn a satirical comic of Quinn, suggesting she traded sex positive reviews. The definition of online harassment is flexible, though I believe that a barrage of tweets bringing up career ruining allegations, more liable, and calling someone a pedantic piece of shit falls in most people's categories. Crash Over Our Network is not an anti harassment campaign. It cannot be an anti harassment campaign as it is run by someone who profits and gains notoriety by openly harassing people online. I know I just read out most, if not the entire article there, people, but you must realise that this is the type of person and the type of company that we're dealing with. This is not a company made for survivors by survivors. I mean, this is basically a network made by bullies for bullies, as you shall soon see. Because if Zoe Quinn is willing to get her friends to dox people, to harass people who criticised her game, blacklisting people, and getting a man fired because he's ideologically opposed to her, then it's fair to say that the people working with her are just as bad, if not worse. Am I right? Well, this is the story of how Crash Override Network is not the network it claims to be, and this is nothing more than a way for Zoe Quinn to gain legitimacy and to basically cover her tracks from all the dirty shit she has done before and has since done. But thankfully, thanks to these two big events that have happened, the lid is finally being opened. Now, the first big story to come out involving Crash Over Our Network involves a very old YouTube personality who's gone through several names, but recently has become more famous as Unseen Perfidy. Now, who is Unseen Perfidy? Well, as outlined by people like Agent of Dow and Hazenberg, this is a guy who has had a long history of being a bully online and then using his bipolar disorder as an excuse for it when he gets called out for it and is inevitably driven off by people. This is why he has gone through so many different monikers, people. Now, he has recently reinvented himself as someone who is anti-Gamergate. In fact, he is so anti-Gamergate that he has made several tweets about them, as you can see here. And so he decided to join Crash Override Network. He is, of course, part of Zoe Quinn's inner circle, it seems. But then things went wrong for him because then he started to use his position to do what he usually does, which is to cause trouble. And in this case, causing trouble was to basically use his position to basically try and get sex from people. Indeed, 20 people came out against Unseen Perfidy. 20 women, as you can see here by noted SJW Izzy Galvez. More on him later, people. If you're catching up, over 20 women have come forward and revealed that Rob Unseen Perfidy has sexually harassed them over DMs, Skype, etc. Some of this abuse goes back for years. For those of us who weren't abused, we learned he lied to us about his relationship with his victims. I'm speechless. This whole thing is so upsetting and gross. Please believe women and please support his victims. I'm devastated. Nice see, it's still kind of alleged as to whether or not he did it, as I've not seen these DMs yet, and I've not seen these Skype messages and Skype inboxes, and I can't just listen and believe it, but at the same time, as you'll see later, he basically admits it, even though he's kind of not admitting it at the same time. Also, even though each victim's voice is enough, Rob admitted to the abuse before de deactivating his accounts, so there's that. So as you can see, Izzy Galvez there confirms that he did basically admit it, but as I say, he doesn't really admit it. But first, Let's continue with the evidence. Of course, this news that broke out really hurt the SUWs. So many were getting really upset about this. I'm so upset, says Joy, about this. Just gah, raging, wanting to break things. I stand with Bisman that says I don't know how to respond other than I believe the victims. God damn it, says pretentious guy. I'm seeing a lot of people who say, while well, they've never felt harassed, are now realising how many red flags they hadn't noticed before. I am beside myself, says Caitlin. Jude Song says, as of a few hours ago, it was 11. I'm so mad since his username is basically gloating about I'm terrible but you won't see it which is funny because that's ironic but the thing is as Izzy said before if this goes back years how come nobody called him out on it but then again I'm not defending him but this is showing that Crash Override is not what it seems to be as they have an actual harasser or alleged harasser on side who has now since left I presume now this is what this chick Danzig has to say who has been talking to the women
women, or at least some of the women, and she says, just been reading about other people's experiences with unseen perfidy. Guy used to DM me on Facebook all the time and imply I needed looking after. Despite my enviness, unseen perfidy would insist on calling me mom. Kept saying he wanted to hang out and protect me. It feels as though half of the shit unseen perfidy would open up about because he trusts you was just so you would pity him. Unseen perfidy was always like these bad things happened to me so you could trust me. By the way, all my friends are women and they say I'm submissive. Eventually I just ended up ignoring the constant I love you hugs and stuff like that. You're so awesome, random DMs he'd send so he ignored me. So yeah, first hand experience of Unseen Perfidy being a creep who doesn't appear to understand boundaries, solidarity to all. Now see, this is social justice and that's what constitutes as harassment to these people and to be honest, if that's as light as he went, I'd hate to see how bad he would go considering a lot of people were saying he was legitimately creepy. So yeah, let's continue. And this is the worst that I've seen described of his behaviour and this says, for the uninitiated, Rob Unseen Perfidy was a male feminist who curated a following via YouTube then allegedly cleaned up and went Twitter. But it's come to light, he would regularly, often tipsy, sexually harass women in DMs, Skype, etc, including guilt tripping via his uh, bipolar disorder. People believe victims and he's basically admitted to as much. Admittance absolves nothing, but this does call some stuff he did into question. Whenever he would sink into, I'm not a good person post, was that his bipolar chiefly? Or was he saying that moments after harassing women? And that in itself paints a picture so sly and sneaky to be vague enough to get simply without anyone knowing what was going on. That's an interesting thing, but this shows the level he would go to, he would be drunk and then harass these people, but then again, he's inebriated, would he have self-control? I don't know, I'm playing devil's advocate people. But this is not the type of person you want helping victims of bullying, and indeed, once we get past this other tweet, which is funny, because he even managed to come to the attention of famous people, you'll see that this guy, even when he wasn't harassing people, was helping the harassers. Now, this drama ended up reaching Patton Oswalt of all people. The male feminist ally turns out to be a creeper harasser is the family values politician turns out to be gay for millennials. An interesting comparison and then some people tell him I know tweets aren't really the space for nuance but this is not even close to a good analogy for either thing. Family values leaders being closeted in gays a set of cultural expectations self-hatred and men sliming into women's spaces. Yeah it's okay for women to slime into men's spaces but not vice versa but whatever people. While using the cover of feminism is a normalised subset of power dynamics and misogyny for real not even close. Yeah it all leads down to hatred of women and not the fact the guy's just a little bit mentally crazy, eh people? And as Andy Jaxi rightly points out, the average male feminist ally is more of a dude bro than a dude bro's feminist rail against. Basically projection people. Now, what was that story I told you about earlier? Well basically, me and Nimad Shangi ended up on a Twitter argument involving us, Gladius Acer, who's a friend of ours, and some people called Blue Chat and Exiled. And Exiled was fighting with Shangi initially over the fact that she went to Crash Override Network, even though she's an anti-feminist and anti-SUW, allegedly, and knows that if she goes to these people, they won't help her or their help will be bullshit and not helpful at all because they don't know what they're doing. These are people who aren't actually experts and never shown their expertise when it comes to matters like this. Basically, she claimed that she was hacked and was getting bullied again by this guy called Ashes of the Raven, who did actually attack her years and years ago, or I don't know, at least on and off recently. I don't know the entire story but it is true and verifiable and she went to Crash Override to complain and ended up in a Skype conversation which is basically what Crash Override is with uh, Unseen Perfidy and Unseen Perfidy of course know these people from his time in the YouTube atheist community and basically decided he would tell Ashes the Raven about her complaining about him. Although it might be a bit hazy that he is sexually assaulting people but as you can see in these tweets here, TFW you do something really fucked up and there's no way to make amends. I'm truly Truly deeply sorry, there's nothing I can do to make things right, but I'm sorry I fucked up tremendously. I hate myself and it's good that I hate myself because I do fucked up things and deserve to feel bad because of them. That's basically admitting that he did something wrong, but he doesn't actually say what he did wrong. He could have fucked up about anything. But one can basically say that yeah, he is admitting to the sexual harassment, but he would never admit to what he did to Exiled, would he? Despite all the sexual harassment stuff which is horrible and he basically admitted to it even though you don't really know what he's admitting to. the Exiled thing to me is more proof that this anti-harassment network is not what it's cracked up to be. And then this leads us to Izzy Galvez and something called Zack Attack.
Now, hashtag Zack Attack was the name given to a Gamergate sting operation led by Mombot and someone called Rudderhouse. Now, Rudderhouse and Mombot basically decided that they were going to out a lot of SJWs as people that they are apparently against. So basically, they like to accuse hashtag Gamergate and anybody who isn't like them as people who are harassers and doxers. Take your pick, anything like that. And they basically wanted to prove that they too were like that. And indeed, they had found their targets of such people as Izzy Galvez and even an Ubisoft creative director. Basically, the plan was that Mombot and Woodhouse would create an alternative identity for Mombot, who is a 40-year-old Japanese mother from Tokyo, and instead pretend that she was actually a 40-year-old white man from America who was a Japanophile and who liked hentai. The plan was to get these people who don't like Mombot and particularly have been after her for a while now and to out them as harassers and doxers. Basically, Rudderhouse would pretend to be an SUW and gain their trust, but in order for this to work, Gamergate also had to fall for it. Although, Gamergate now is kind of, you know, dead, but I'm using that for convenience, people. So, they started having arguments online, which was, of course, fake, and managed to convince everyone that they had fallen out and Rudderhouse was now absolved of everything that he had ever done and was now part of AG. What followed was then Rudderhouse began to feed the SUWs information about Zack, which was the name of the person that they'd invented, who was supposedly Mombot, of course Mombot is an anonymous person from Japan, and they became obsessed. And then, lo and behold, they bring in Izzy Galvez, who went on TV to say this. Israel Galvez doesn't feel much of a gaming stigma anymore. Hey, everyone games now, you know, we're not all the basement dwellers you know, living in our mom's basement. But that passion to play has also put Galvez in a dangerous place. They're basically domestic terrorists, especially when they take it to this level. They uh, posted my information, my wife's information, my father's information. It's called doxing, publishing docs about a person in the hopes that someone else uses the information to harass and intimidate. Galvez says unknown people pranked him by sending religious books, Mormon missionaries, pizzas, and more to his house. After reading the escalating posts, Galvez went to Sergeant John Buss with the Enumclaw police. He feared someone would send in a hoax threat. Next thing I know, at 11.50 p.m., I had five Enumclaw police officers at my door. No harm that night because Galvez had warned police. A very different outcome in Portland last month when the former house of a gaming critic was swatted after her information was doxxed online. Stunning, perhaps, to think that all this harassment and danger is happening because of video games. If Gamergate was really about ethics and game journalism, I don't think we would be seeing all the harassment, all the stalking, all the death threats, all the rape threats. Eventually, they did indeed dox the fake account, the fake identity. There was going to be a window of 12 hours until they exposed the sting, but Gamergate people happened to figure out that it was fake, so they had to do it in nine hours. And thus, everything went to shit. The, the, the SUWs were, of course, exposed, and these people came out looking worse than they could have done two years ago. They have now been proven to be hypocrites. These crash override people basically showed that this is exactly what it is. It's just a front for Zoe and them to do what they want to do. And, you know, I'm only telling you the story. Let's just show what they were doing in action. Now, Skype logs were leaked during the aftermath of the sting to prove how horrible these people truly are. And this is what Izzy says. It's weird. I'm usually against this stuff, but this is someone who gets away with all their abuse because of their mask. If they are unmasked and cower away for a long time, I'm okay with that. Of course, Mombot has never abused anybody. All she did was expose how bad these people are and write articles about them. That's all she does. And then somebody says, yeah, basically, if someone is using anonymity or a false identity or cause a lot of harm, I'm 100% okay with exposing them. This sounds very familiar, people, but let's continue. Matt Myers says, like that violent to Krez scumbag. I don't know who that is. I recommend redacting his last name if he comes back somehow. F.U. I work from home says, and dropping the other stuff redacted. Then Izzy says, that self-portrait with the GG colours and his beloved Gundam would be second to last. Last hit should be the incest crap. I don't know what that 
was, but again, this is stuff that they've been fed to that is, of course, fake. They've weaponized a Japanese identity, said FU, which is funny because this is the same group of people that accuse Japanese developers of Orientalism and all sorts of stupid shit. This is the last group of people to accuse, even though it's fake, people of weaponizing Japanese identity. These people don't like Japanese culture, or at least the part of it that's become famous. Then Izzy says, yeah, lots of fucked up layers. That is the line to take, another says. I can't understand what his name means. It's some kind of Asian script. Then they go on to say, not the gender, the whiteness. And then Izzy Galvez says, good point. This is, of course, talking about the angle they're going to take it. And one says, yeah, if you talk about the gender, it will be seen as transphobic. The beloved is actually an Eva unit, you fake need, Izzy, otherwise known as nerd. Yeah, Eva unit is from an old anime from the 80s, I think. Fake nerd, that, that is, said Matt Myers. So the picture of him with the Wi-Fi thing is also an ad for that company. So we're getting pushback on that front. Oh my god, says Izzy. And then they found the fake Facebook. And then, of course, they end up finding the man and they, they say, it seems to be a German living in Japan, or who the hell is Tristan Junker? Even though it was actually someone called Zachary. Basically, as you can see here, these Skype blogs prove that these people are willing to use the tactics that they accuse us of using and people like Flying Monkeys use because it's okay for them to do so because we're evil in their eyes. We've done wrong. We're people who abuse people. Even though, as we've learned in my videos and other people's videos recently, that doxing doesn't help the police. It doesn't solve anything. Vigilante justice is wrong. And that's what Izzy Galvez, this man has been proven to be a massive hypocrite. He will do whatever it takes to save the women's, save the world from these evil goober gators. So much for going on local TV and decrying this when you are about to do the same tactics. But then again, there is no bad tactics, just bad targets. Or whatever movie Bob said. Now, there is a lot to cover here, and I'll leave most of it in the sources down below, but I'm afraid that time is running out for this video as I'm trying to keep it as short as possible. But now we must move to the end of this video. Yeah. So, in conclusion, we can safely say that Crash Override Network is nothing more than a front for Zoe Quinn to basically show to the world that, oh, she's really a lovely person, really nice, she's anti-harassment, anti-bullying, wants to protect people from all these dangerous people on the internet, but really is nothing more than a harasser herself who basically allows other harassers and bullies sanctuary in this network to do what they want to do, which is to harass people who disagree with them, to harass people who they just don't like, or just happens to be the person who may be associated with somebody that they don't like. Or maybe they just want a bit of the pussy. Either way, this is not a network or an organisation for the quote-unquote survivors, but this is an organisation made by bullies for bullies. And if you want to solve internet harassment, do not give this woman your money. Do not help these people. Do not even approach them. Do not go to them looking for help. You will not get any. Go to the police. Go to actual anti-bullying organisations. Go to proven, trustworthy professionals and stay far away from these social justice warriors who are just doing this for ideological reasons and to hide their real intentions. This has been Man 93 Like and share the video if you like my channel. Please subscribe. If you like the video, give it a like. And and if you really love me, please donate to the Patreon, links down below, and until next time, sayonara people!